In this video, we're gonna be going over CRM lead scoring in detail. We're gonna cover essentially how to set it up, how to view it in a record, and then how people actually end up using it out in the wild. So before we jump in, I do wanna ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Leave any feedback, questions, or additional video requests in the comment section down below that like button. And last but not least, if you need any help with your Zoho install, just head on over to Zanata.com, click on book a meeting, and we'll be talking about how we can help in no time. So without any further ado, let's jump right on into CRM. We're gonna be setting up lead scoring today, which is essentially a way that we can assign numerical values to different types of activities associated with a lead record. Now, I'm kind of using the word lead scoring. That's how it's used most commonly. Do keep in mind that you can score contacts and kind of accounts and other records as well. So I'm gonna focus in on leads just for the purposes of our demo here today, but I always like to highlight this can be used in a couple other contexts as well. To jump in, we're gonna to go to settings here in the top right, our little handy dandy cog wheel. And then we're gonna go under the automation section into scoring rules. So inside of scoring rules, these are essentially calculated based on either a field value or a customer interaction via some form of communication. So I'm going to set up a new scoring rule. We're going to call this our example scoring rule because I'm not very creative. Um, we're going to associate this to a module and then to either one layout or all layouts within a particular module. So once I click next, we're gonna get to really the meat and potatoes here. Inside of our lead scoring rules, there's really two different ways that a lead can accumulate a score. Either it's gonna be via a field on that record. So I would be doing something like saying, hey, if annual revenue is above a certain number, I'm gonna add a certain unit of points. Right, so maybe boom, I click save, and now this has been added. One thing that's important with lead scoring is the actual point value itself doesn't matter. They really only matter in reference to each other. So a lot of people kind of do like anything that gives you one, call that five, and then anything should just be multiples of five just to keep things easy. Um, so maybe if annual revenue is above a certain number, we're gonna give them 10 points. And then maybe if you know, campaigns opt out is selected, we're going to subtract a whole bunch of points, right? Maybe we're going to get rid of 100 points, 50 points, whatever it may be. Down below, we have access to interaction data. And what you'll see here is that a lot of these actually source from non CRM applications. So right off the bat, of course, we have email insights, these are going to be emails sent from directly inside of CRM. Um, we also have access to survey data. So if they were to respond or even just visit or open a survey, we can pull data from Zoho campaigns emailing. So if they've opened, clicked, or bounced, we can pull from Zoho webinar to see if they've registered for particular webinar events. And we can also pull from Zoho sign in terms of documents signing and documents being declined giving you plus or minus points respectively. And so while these are the integrated options that I have set up inside of my demo account, I do want to highlight that there are even more tools that you can tie in um, that can apply scoring. So even things like Zoho Backstage, Zoho Social, if you have integrated social accounts and brands, and you kind of connected those leads and contacts to their social media profiles, you can score there. Um, you can score from Zoho desk interactions, so tickets opened, closed, feedback that's been given. You can score based on telephony, so a call placed, a call answered. And last but not least, just because you can also scale or score based on MailChimp. Um, if you're using the CRM's native integration to MailChimp, unsurprisingly, that's going to work very similarly to the Zoho campaign's scoring options. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to go through and offline, I'm just going to create kind of a normal looking scoring list so that honestly, if you're in a position where you're like, hey, I don't really know what I should be scoring people, you can kind of start with this as a baseline. So we'll be right back. All right, so I have set these up as a baseline. I'm gonna explain my methodology a bit, but do keep in mind, at the end of the day, these point values are all just relative. So as long as they're clearly defined and they're in the order of priority that you think makes sense, then you should be good to go. So I added a few here. I added one inside of my lead fields for replied to campaign. Um, this is something we will set up a lot. There's just a little checkbox here. 
We might create an automation inside of Zoho campaigns where if they were to reply to like news at Zenata.com, I can check a box inside of their account, which says, hey, they're actually replying to some of the outbound marketing that we're sending out. You'll notice that I give a reply kind of a lot of points, right? Because that's even better than an open or a click. It's like, hey, they're actually getting in touch with us. So the relative score should be higher. You'll see here inside of email insights, I'm giving them five points for an email opened and 10 for an email clicked. Again, just inside of the methodology that a click is better than an open, right? And also implies an open. So here they would actually get 15 points for a click, right? Because they've opened, there's five, they've clicked, there's another 10. Surveys, same thing here. Again, if they respond, that's better than a visit. So I went with 10 and five points. For Zoho campaigns, I essentially copied the scoring rules from the CRM emails. This is a decision you'll want to make. If your CRM emails are a little more targeted, a little more specific, you might make them worth more points than an email sent from Zoho campaigns. But again, this is just going to depend on your particular sending preferences and the nature of the outreach that you are doing. For a webinar, I included some points there. And then for Zoho Sign, let's say I'm actually going to change this one. If they were to sign a document, I'm going to give them a lot of points. If they decline a document, I'm also going to give them or subtract quite a few points. Now, down here at the bottom, we can choose if we want to add score fields to the records. I say yes, do go ahead and add those. Um, now, there are a few different types of scores here. You have a negative score, a negative touch point score a positive score, a positive touch point score, and then last but not least, a score and a touch point score. Now for me, score is obviously going to be the most important. That is like the total summation of all of them. Um, if you're wondering what a touch point score is, that is the score of everything from here on down on the page, right? So that actually means some type of interaction with that lead rather than just a score based on a particular field value. So you might also want to include the touch point score. It's up to you if you want to pull in negative and positive scores specifically. Sometimes it can be nice. It's a little counterintuitive. I am more likely to add a negative score than a specific positive score because what I might want to do is actually create a report where the negative score is greater than zero for any record because that might indicate that something bounced, right? Or that something was declined. It might be a more triggerable action. In my case, I'm just going to add all of these main ones here. So a positive score and a negative score just to be safe. Now, last but not least, when we create a new scoring rule, we can choose if we want to update existing records. I am going to say no. Um, oop, they want a new value for here, so I'll just call this overall score. All right, so after doing a bit of quick renaming of my field names, again, this is just in a demo account, so I have similarly named fields, so I'm giving them new names. And now I can click Save and then Update Old Records because I do want it to reach back and apply these new scoring rules to any existing records that are inside of my Zoho account. So now let's think about what we actually want to do with scoring rules, right? So how are these actually going to be used in practice? So one of the two, there are two main ways that we'll end up using scoring rules. They're either going to be to target leads for manual outreach or to set up automated workflows that trigger outreach activities for us. So when we're going to be targeting a specific group of leads for manual outreach, what is that going to look like? So generally for me, what that looks like is we'll have leads that have some certain score value. So let's say in this case, replied to campaign is set up to be true, which should trigger that they get some positive score points, right? So we can see now their overall score is set to 50 and we're able to identify that through these field values. So what I may want to do is come into my leads module, create a custom view called, you know, high score leads. Maybe then I want to say, hey, if the overall score is greater than or equal to some number value. So 25, 50, 100. Again, this is all relative. So it's just based on what you set up. And then maybe their lead status isn't, you know, junk, lost, told me to go away, right? Whatever it may be. Um, these are the types of leads that we might want to actually chase down, right? And so I can come in and I can create this view. I will normally then put the score into the view itself. 
And now I have this cleaner list of leads that have some type of score value. If you are a type of business that goes to trade shows very regularly, you're getting big lists of leads. Maybe you're buying some leads from Zoom Info or other data prospecting providers. A really good strategy is to put those in the CRM, do some outbound marketing to them, and then surface the ones that have a certain score value here inside of a custom view, right? Because at the end of the day, if I've got five sales reps and 25,000 leads, we can't chase all of them at once, right? We need to give them a way to self-qualify for that more specific and targeted outreach. That is one really big way to use lead scores, right? Essentially get all these scores running, put them into custom views, and then make sure that we're doing the actual manual outreach to them at that point. Now, one other way that we can use lead scoring is inside of our workflow rules. So here inside of workflow rules, I'm gonna create a rule. We're gonna create one for leads. And I'm gonna create a rule based on a score decrease. So here I can say, hey, if a score is decreased, and then I can say for a particular set of scoring rules or for any of the scoring rules that I've created, do a thing. Now we might think, okay, why would I trigger a workflow to do something when a lead score goes down? Well, if we were to look at the reasons that a lead score might go down, it's either they opted out of email campaigning, they had an email bounce from either CRM or campaigns, or they've declined some type of document for signature. So any of those criteria that we see there might be a good opportunity for a reach out, right? If I'm doing some drip emails to somebody and it bounces, maybe it's time for a phone call, right? We can't rely on those emails anymore. So really useful little trick here is to say, hey, when that score is decreased, something needs to be done. And so I can create a task that says, hey, salesperson, whoever's assigned to this lead, their score has gone down, right? So we need to now follow up on them and figure out what is going on, right? Are they not interested? Did they get fired? Did they win the lottery and quit? Um, why is this bouncing? Why did they decline that quote? Whatever it may be. So here now, as a perfect example, if we were to come back into this lead, let's say that they opted out of Zoho campaigns completely and this box was checked that should generate a negative score, right? We should decrease our score as a result. And so I've checked that box. Now we'll see, hey, overall score is minus 50. And we've got this task created right away to do something about it, right? Uh, maybe it's a phone call. Maybe it's a more targeted approach. Maybe it's reaching out to a coworker, right? Whatever it may be. Now, at least we have this notification to say, hey, something happened. We need to take an action. With that, those are kind of the big main topics here around lead scoring. Step one, set it up. All right, determine what different point values you wanna to give to different types of activities and how do you wanna process those as they are occurring. Step two, create those different custom views so that you're able to easily track the leads that are in fact engaged and that you wanna maybe chase down with a more targeted approach. And then last but not least, set up some workflows just to make sure that as scores are maybe increasing by big amounts or decreasing by big amounts, we have some follow-ups in place to make sure that we are prospecting those leads to the best of our ability. As always, thank you so much for watching. If this video is useful for you, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Leave any questions, video requests, and feedback down in that comment section, and we will see you next time.